Right, so lately I've been speaking to many of you about uh, regular juicing, oiling of the body, getting our joints um, moving properly. And I have shared with you guys before um, a, a longer video on juicing. This one I just want to go straight into it um, and actually just take you through. I'm not going to be talking much. I want you to just watch and follow along. Um, for many of you, I have done this sequence um, with you in your sessions. And this, I cannot, I cannot stress just how important this is for your joints. It is just as important as doing your teeth. It is just as important as getting in the shower. It is just as important as the things that you do every day to look after yourself with self-care. But we forget um, that our joints are part of us and we tend to just get up and go. And therefore, over time, we become stiff and rigid and we are, our bodies are meant to move in this three-dimensional patterning all the time. But we just get so stuck in these linear patterns and hence when we start to get injuries, we start to stiffen up and we start to feel like we can't move as well. So um, we will be moving with a couple of um, compound movements, but also isolating as well. So working through some isometric movements as well. Um, whereas before we've been sort of moving through both hips, we might be going through one hip and et cetera, and trying to move in our three planes of movement, which is our frontal, our sagittal, and our transverse plane. So firstly, just starting off with the feet. So many of you know this, just rolling around on the ball of the foot. And I want you to take your time, like if some of you guys have been doing this a while, you'll notice that it's not just the foot that's moving, it's actually the knee joint and the hip joint as well. Try to soften the rest of your body. Try to make sure that, you know, hands, shoulders, face is not tense enough. Change direction. So I'll take you through a full, probably 15 minutes or so of this this morning. It may go for 20. But once you get to know this routine, you can do this in five minutes or 10 minutes. Preferably do the full 20 minutes if you can. But I understand that not everybody has the time. But we easily spend up to five hours on our phone sometimes a day. Um, I'm sure we all have 20 minutes to look after our bodies from the inside out. Changing direction, uh, changing feet. What we're looking for is any areas that are feeling stuck or rigid or angry or tight, right? So if we're finding these sticky points where it's not moving fluidly, that's an invitation for us to tune in and ask the question, okay, what is it that that part of my body needs? How can I actually loosen up? Because the last thing we want to be is stiff and rigid and angry throughout our bodies. Isn't that hard? Change direction. Be really nice once you get to know this to close down your eyes. And move into the Achilles. We'll take it back to the front front foot and push through with the ankle so that we're flexing the foot and we're stretching the back of the Achilles. Soften this knee and start to pump that foot down and up. So we're aiming for about 25 times. This is one of the most important ones that you can do for your Achilles. Um, we forget about this guy so much and it's so important that he's supple. Give it a shake and then changing side. So push through first, about 10 seconds here, pulling the toes back, stretching the Achilles, giving it a little signal that we're about to move and then start to pump the foot down and up. If you notice your foot is going left or right or this action's not happening, generally there is something going on with your spine. The message that comes from the brain down the spine to the foot is getting obviously disturbed. So it likely is telling you that there is something, uh, tightness, rigidity going on with your spinal system as well. So from that, we're just going to move into our knees and work into some knee circles here. Now, on my first video that I did with you guys, I kept it pretty, um, just pretty soft. And you can either stay here or you can start to really involve the feet and possibly come onto the toes and then rock right onto the blade edges of the feet and slowly go around. So you listen to your knees, right? We're also getting compression into the front of the ankle, right? And then flexion into the back. So we're really stretching into that Achilles, the tendon, and it is very stretchy. Um, it's only because um, they tend to go because we don't pay any attention to them. They get really rigid and they're not meant to be. They're meant to be very, very stretchy and they're the 
biggest pump of lymph in our body actually so they should be very very active and fluid changing directions so you know eight or so circles take your time you're trying to listen to your knee joints here and ask the questions what's going on it's like i'm stirring a pot with my knee so i'm just taking my time to go all the way around just work to your degree. There's, you don't have to go deep in this. There's no goal, there's no end point. Each day is gonna be a different story and that's the same with everything we do. So coming up to the to standing now, and we're just going to move the hip in this sort of train wheel pattern. So what I want you to do is pull the toes up and as you come down, scrunch the toes and then lift up. So pull the toes up as you come down, scrunch the toes, at the same time move the hip. So toes come up, scrunch the toes, at the same time move the hip. So we're going forward and back with the hip joint here, and also playing with the toes. So toes up, scrunch, and around. And then bring it back the other way. So toes pull up, scrunch as you go down, and then draw that circular pattern like a train wheel with one of your hips. I've started with the left. Give that a shake. And then just gently changing sides. So coming back here, so coming up. Moving through, toes spread, scrunch, go down, toes spread, scrunch, go down, toes spread, scrunch, go down. So our hip mobility is probably the most important of the lot. Um, and it's one of the big things that's missed with lower back recovery and rehab and prehab. You know, um, we're meant to move, just change direction, so going up and down. We're meant to move our hips in all different directions, and too often we just move them through a linear pattern. We sit, we walk forward, um, and we, we don't pay, we sit in our couch, and we don't pay attention to moving our hips in and around the joint, in and around the sacral joint. So this is where this single leg stuff comes really in handy. We're going to put the right foot down. And we're just going to stand on one leg now and we're going to let this left foot hover off and we're just going to try and float. So with this leg here, we're, for a minute, we're going to soften that knee. We're on the tripod of the right foot. And for 30 seconds, we're just going to feel what's going on here. We're going to let this left leg do its thing. And I want you to really try and soften your body here. So we're actually working in strengthening the glute medius, right, which is the, you'll start to feel that heat up. Um, it's the, sort of on the side of your glutes here. And when we work into that glute medius and we start to strengthen it, we start to help our hips externally rotate. We start to um, get our hips moving in this more neutral sort of pattern where we have a lot more space. So I want you to feel your balance now and I want you to feel it by pressing down into that tripod of the foot. There's no weight through the toes. And now when you close your eyes and I want you just to let yourself be. And you might... Remember you've got a tail, so you can put that toe down at any time on the back foot. But just let yourself kind of hover in space and try to be really soft in the upper body. A lot of our back pain and tightness, as I said, stems from our hips not moving in this ball and socket movement. Uh, too often they're just moving in a hinge movement and again they just get stuck and rigid. Also tight quads, tight hamstrings and hip flexors from too much sitting uh, in chairs, in, in cars, and not actually moving in and around the joint. Well done. Bring that foot down. We're just gonna find our grounding on the other foot and just feel what it feels like to let that leg float around in space. So my eyes are open for the moment. Playing with the internal rotation, external rotation, and when you do this after a while, you can then start to play a bit of strength work by really bending that knee, coming down to single leg squatting patterns. But for the purpose of the video today, I'm just keeping it more juicy, more mobile. 
It's allowing the hip to move. And before you close your eyes, just feel into the tripe of the foot. Try to soften the upper body and then just let yourself be. Remember that back foot acts as a tail, so if you need to put the toe down, put the toe down, it will help you balance. But you'll notice that if you soften the upper body, it will really help you a lot to bring yourself back to this place of neutral, no matter where you go. Ten seconds. And placing that foot down. Lovely. Okay, we're going to now move into the, the right hip. And we're going to just start to place the hands on the right hip. And we want to start to move the hip down and up. So what I'm looking for here is this dropping down of the hip bone and squeezing and compression of the oblique. So dropping down, squeezing up, dropping down, squeezing up. So I'm just working on that right side. Hip bone drops down, hip bone lifts up. Good idea to practice this one in a mirror when you first start so that you can actually see what's going on with that right hip. The rest of your body will want to take over here. I want you to specifically focus just on that right hip. And then once you've got it softened down the rest of your body here, so moving that hip bone down, lengthening through the hip flexor and psoas, and then compressing as you bring up and you feel your core, uh, specifically your obliques activate here. So same hip, we're gonna go up and around now, creating that train wheel pattern. All right, so trying to get, as I said before, our hips segmenting and working in, uh, in all these three planes of movement. So our transverse, our sagittal, and our frontal planes. So creating a train wheel with that right hip going down, up and around, which is creating a lot of space around my sacral area, which of course is going to give me a lot of space in my lumbar lower spine. Change directions with that train wheel pattern now. So lifting up, going down, up and around. Now even as I'm doing this today, I actually woke up with a little bit of a tight back this morning. So it's actually feeling so nice for my body to move through this. Beautiful. So give that side a bit of a shake out and we move to the other side. So with that left hip now, what we're looking for is a soft knee on the right and we're going to drop that left hip down and up. So left hip down, left hip up. So lengthening, compressing. Lengthening, compress. Lengthen, compress. Just take your time. So really want to feel that left hip drop down and then squeeze up. So keep your, it's really warm in here, keep your breath with this one as well. Close down your eyes as much as you need to. Once you have it, like feel your, feel it in your body, right? You can actually feel the lengthening and you feel the hip bone lift up. And now we're going to create that train wheel pattern with the left hip. So down, up, and around. All right, so down, up, and around, just into that left hip. It's a very small micro movement. Just trying to get that left hip moving up and around into that sort of train wheel pattern. And then taking it back the other way. So up and around. Quite a difficult one to do. Again, maybe look in the mirror as you do this. Notice any other areas that are tensing or holding on. And then shake that out. Beautiful. One of my favorite ones here. Now that the hips are nice and um, well, we're going to come into what my teacher calls this uh, standing mountain pose. So we Come in always gently and we want to make sure our feet are nice and grounded here, that we have room to move. And we come down and we're going to hold this for a minute and we're just going to allow the hips to move in any direction. So round, forward, back, 
Just really feeling here what's going on. You'll notice my knees also are inward, external rotation. This, she calls this as if we were standing on a mountain and things will try to push us out the way, but we're not moving at all. You know, our feet are very, very grounded, right? All the wind in the world, all the stuff in the world will try to knock us over, but we're feeling very grounded through our feet and we're kind of very fluid with how we move. It's like the matrix. Just allow yourselves to dodge, move, be fluid. Go really slow here, especially so that you can listen to your spine. What is so important is this engagement through the core. You're constantly paying attention to working through pulling your belly button to your spine so that your tummy is engaged and you protect through your sacral area and your lower back. Keep being there for a little while. You may even come down a little bit lower. And just work with your body here. Go 10 more seconds. And get that air, massive three dimensional movement through those hips. To come out of this one, very slowly bring yourself back to neutral, start to walk your feet in. And then we're just going to bring both our hips now into this. Train more pattern where we did on a singular leg before. We're now just bringing both hips into this. So we work into a posterior tilt, anterior tilt, up and around. Posterior, anterior, up and around. And this is one of my favorite ones for the lower back. Hence why I'm doing it and sharing it with you guys today. You can just stay with your single ones, but if you have twine, um, I guarantee you this feels amazing in the body. Our bodies love this. I so recommend doing this, especially if you sit or if you get tight backs. I'm going to take that same movement back the other way. So listen, you've got to engage, especially if the back is feeling tight. We have to really pull the belly button to the spine, engage through the core. And that will help that understanding that lower back movement will just really pay attention to how we move. A lot of the times when our back goes is when we're not thinking about it, we twist or we go down to pick something up and we're, we're not engaging, we're not paying attention. Beautiful. So moving the hips now up and around. So we're going to go in this really nice, like I like to call this the pirate ship movement. So up, over, and around, down, up, over and around. And once you've got it, soften down the arms. Again, beautiful movement through that sacral area. Try to relax any other areas that are holding on. And then take it back the other way. And of course, if any of these feel really good in your body, you know, when I first did this quite a few years ago now, we did this for nearly an hour and a half, segmenting each part of the body. So I said, I'm hoping to get this done in 20 minutes for you guys. Once I get stuck in it, though, I just love it and it just feels so good. But you get to know what uh, the moves are. We just obviously moving all the way up from our feet, all the way to our head, and then you do what you can. That is the most important thing. So I'm just going to lastly sort of finish off through this ribcage area. So we want to push the sternum forward and then draw the sternum back. So I'm, not, I'm now taking the hips out of it. So we've really moved in every direction in our hips. And now we're sort of moving up to this rib cage area, which of course is also a beautiful massage for the internal organ. We're going to draw the heart forward and then draw the heart back. I absolutely love this movement. The hips are relatively stable here, so pushing forward. In the back. Same sort of movement, but we're now just going to move side to side. So allowing this transfer of the rib cage, left to right, lower body pretty stable. I've kept the wrists out of this one today. I do have a wrist mobility routine. On my YouTube, so there's plenty of wrists and fingers and things like that as well. Um, 
that are definitely an important part of it, but for the sake of today's video, I've just left that out more so hips, spine, lower back, and feet. Now I'm going to combine the whole lot of that. So like we're stirring a pot, so press sternum forward, move to the side, pull the sternum back, and to the other side. So um, some people like to let their hands come up through here as well. So you're getting this like full, real nice juicy here of the body. You find what works for you, but try to not uh, involve your hips. Again, mirrors are really good teachers for this. You can see what's going on in your body. And we'll take that back the other way. We'll get into the shoulders a little bit today because the shoulders can be a really tight one for people. Um, but I will leave the neck and the head out of it today. Um, I might do a separate video onto that one as well. So you should be feeling pretty loose by this stage. So before we go into any, actually we might do the shoulders first. So if we're going to again segment the right shoulder, what tends to happen is this, the track will take over. So I want you to just start to do this standing. I just wanted to show you a little closer. I'm trying to protract and retract the right shoulder. So I'm not really moving any other area of my body here. I'm trying to really work into that right shoulder. Right. Trying not to let the trap muscles take over. So it's this closing, opening. My arm's really soft. I'm just trying to move just the shoulder joint. Really little movement. Left side. Now again, the mirrors are really good for this one as you'll find there'll be plenty of areas that we'll want to take over here. Try to let go of any tension. And just let the shoulder joint do its thing. Beautiful. And lastly, full spinal roll. So from here we bend into the knees and we start to now involve the full spine, including the neck. So knees bend, hips, sorry, pelvis, hips, belly, chest, chin, and then go again. So roll through, involving every single part of the spine now. Even the feet get involved here. And then if we can, we're going to try and take it back the other way. So, I, uh, the best way to work with this is have a think about um, being against the wall. So nose, chin, chest, belly, hips, and then around. Nose, chin chest, belly, hips, and around. The slower the better. Beautiful. Oh, I should feel pretty nice after that. I'm going to leave you with one um, rhythm pattern or coordination that my teacher has only just taught me. Um, I will just do it and if you wanted to get this or do it for your kids, just practice it, follow along. That's how I learned it. I can't really tell you how to do it. It's just a monkey see monkey. I'll turn both directions as well. Great one for warming up through the shoulders, creating some looseness in their shoulders. I'll stay here for about two minutes.
that's it. If you um, their coordination is really good for us. They help us um, with our mind as well. Uh, we get frustrated trying to learn it, but the frustration is such a great teacher of patience. So give it a go. So yeah, go took me quite a while to learn that. Um, you might get it straight away. Um, but remember, there's no beginning or end with this stuff. There's no goal. It will look different every single day. I hope that helps you. Um, it is one of my favorite things to do every day, um, whether it be five minutes or 20 minutes, depending on the time I have. So enjoy, everyone.